All right, we've talked about transformations, we've talked about graphs, so now we have to talk about characteristics. Talking about characteristics, we'll talk about domain and range first. So let's look at what domain is. Your domain hasn't changed. When we talk about domain, we're still talking about all the possible x values. We still go from left to right, and we see what's going on with our graph. It's going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. When we look from left to right, we're still going to see some arrows. Those arrows tell me I'm going infinitely in each direction, so our domain will be the same. Our range, remember, we're talking about all the possible y values. So remember when we talk about range, we talk about from bottom to top. So there's a couple of things that we can see here. So if my graph is opened, or is a growth, or it's a decay, that's going to be from our asymptote to infinity. If my graph has any sort of reflection, that's going to be from negative infinity up to my asymptote. So let's look at some examples here. So the domain, again, hasn't changed. So we'll go from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, we go from bottom to top. So at the bottom, my graph is flattening out. It's flattening out at zero, so that's my asymptote. And it's going to climb up where this arrow is pointing to positive infinity. Now, a little bit different, this range is going to be with parentheses because my asymptote doesn't exist. I can't reach it. I'm just approaching it. Again, my domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's look at this range. This graph's being reflected. So at the bottom here, this arrow is pointing towards negative y values. And that's at the bottom. And as we climb up to the top of our graph, it's flattening out at an asymptote that's at 3. Go ahead and pause the video and give yourself a try on these bottom two examples and come back to check your answer. All right, let's check our answers. Your domain stays the same, but let's look at our ranges. We start at the bottom here, work our way to the top. We start at the bottom and work our way to the top. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask on the mind. Move to the next set of characteristics. X and Y intercepts, and we're no longer talking about quadratic functions, so we won't talk about this zero fella. Remember your Y intercept is zero, comma, Y, and your X intercept is X, comma, zero. So let's look at some of these. Again, we are not worried about zeros. Let's look at the y-intercept first. So looking at the y-intercept, that's where it crosses the y-axis. So that's at that ordered pair 0, 1. But if we look for an x-intercept, you should notice there's an asymptote. So if there's an asymptote, at y equals 0. So my graph will never cross the x-intercept. If it never crosses the x, the x-axis, there's no x-intercept. So get graph number 2. Again, let's find the y-intercept first. It's where it crosses the y-axis. Again, that's going to be at 0, 1. The x-intercept, it does exist, 
because my asymptote is above the x-axis. So as we follow this graph, it does hit, and we'll give it a good estimate at negative one-half zero. Work on these other two graphs to provide the answers and come back and check. All right, let's check our answers. Again, notice you have an asymptote that's either above the x-axis or on the x-axis, so you won't have any x-intercepts. Right, let's look at the next characteristic. Um, this page will be quick because they don't exist. Okay, maximums and minimums don't exist in exponential functions. The reason is because of the asymptote. Okay? So there can't be a minimum or a maximum if there's an asymptote. And there can't be a maximum or minimum if it's an error. So I'm just going to cross these out. Um, so they, it does not exist because of asymptotes and arrows. Remember, asymptotes are imaginary lines your graph cannot cross. And so if it doesn't exist, like if, it, if it's just approaching some number, then it doesn't count as a value, as something that I'm reaching to be an absolute highest point or absolute lowest point. But we can talk about your asymptote. Remember, your asymptote is a line that we, a line that the graph gets closer and closer to, but it'll never touch. And we write it as a y equals, because that's the equation of a horizontal line. So looking at the first graph, we've talked about this already. This has an asymptote at y equals zero. This one at the top here has an asymptote at y equals three. This one has an asymptote at y equals three. And this one has an asymptote of zero. Again, the maximums and minimums cannot exist. So an example would be, there's no minimum. The lowest value here is an asymptote. I can't approach that. There's no maximum because this falls off my graph. It goes on forever. Infinity is a number we can't reach. Intervals of increase and decrease, and we'll ignore the interval of constant. This is going to be super lovely, okay? Interval of increase, interval of decrease, we're still looking for um, positive and negative slopes. So if I have a positive slope, I must have a growth function. So my graph must look something like this, or it's gonna look like a reflection like that, because I'm increasing from left to right. And so you're going to be increasing across the entire domain, negative infinity to positive infinity. For a decreasing function, you're still looking for a negative slope. That means you're looking at a decay function, which means something's falling down or it's been reflected. Okay, so from left to right, the graph is going down, but it's going down across the entire domain. So Basically, you're just trying to determine, is this function increasing or is this function decreasing? So again, we're ignoring the interval constant. 
So graph number one, is this an increasing function or decreasing? It's an increasing function. That's a growth function. So we're going to increase from negative infinity to positive infinity. The decreasing doesn't exist. From left to right, this graph is climbing. I, it's climbing up. So this is also an interval of increase from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. From left to right, I'm going up that hill of a roller coaster. So this is a growth function. This is from negative infinity to positive infinity. The last graph that's fallen, that's falling down the hill of the roller coaster, that's a decreasing function. So I cannot be increasing. Let's move into end behavior. Remember, end behavior is the thing that's happening at the end of our graph. So, there's a couple, a lot of different, and I'm going to try and draw all the different ways that this could be happening. So, if we see a graph that's climbing up, if we see a graph that is reflected, then these arrows are approaching negative x values, and so that means the y is going to approach the asymptote. If the graph is opened up like this, or reflected, let's take a look. So if it's opened up, the y value is approaching positive infinity. If it's moving down, then this is approaching negative infinity. Again, similarly here, we're going to look at the same options that I just gave you. So... If it's positive, then this arrow is headed to positive infinity. If it's this graph, then it's headed to negative infinity. And if it's either of these graphs, a decay or a reflection of it, you're headed towards the asymptote. So let's look at some examples. So here's where my x values are negative. These are negative x values. So this part of my graph is flattening out towards my asymptote. My asymptote is 0. Here's where my x values are positive. This part of my graph is headed up. Those values that are headed up are positive y values. Another example here. Here are my negative x values. Negative x values. So if we follow this arrow, this arrow is headed towards negative y values. Here's positive x values. So if we follow this graph where the x values are positive, this arrow is flattening out at the asymptote that that's 3. Let's work on two more examples here. So here's where my x values are negative. So we have this is flattening out at our asymptote. So that's at 3. Here's where my x values are positive. So if I follow this arrow, that's towards infinity. Now the next example is a little different. Why don't you try that and see how much you've retained. There's that last example. Notice in your end behavior, you'll either have some type of infinity and your asymptote in your final answer. Tune in to more videos for more examples.